Welcome to this tech tip showing how to access EdgeCam's machine cycle time calculations. The part we're going to use for this demonstration has toolpath already created. We'll explore the options that EdgeCam provides to report cycle time and how they can be used to improve the program. First, let's look at the overall cycle time. When we hover the cursor over the sequence window, at the end of the tooltip it shows us the cycle time. We can also see that information by going to the Verify List on Workflow Setup tab and choosing Cycle Time from the list. This provides the information written out to the Feedback window, which will be stored here in this list as long as we have this part open until we delete or right-click and clear the data. This may be more of a permanent way to keep access to that information. It's also possible to look at Cycle Time for individual events. If I right-click, notice that IntelliSnap is on. By default, it usually is, but it can be disabled. As long as IntelliSnap is on, when you hover over an item, we can see that a tooltip pops up that tells us the layer that the item is on, that it is toolpath. It tells us it's a roughing cycle and identifies which roughing cycle in the sequence list it is, that this is machined in the top CPL, that the cycle time is 28 seconds and that there are 32 elements or moves in the CNC code. If we use IntelliSnap and hover over the roughing in this case, notice that there's a couple of arrows that come up on the cursor and the top line says item one out of a possible three. If you look at your keyboard, you'll notice the tab key also has the same arrows that point in opposite directions. And this is a hint that you should be using the tab key to cycle through the different options to get to the one that you're interested in seeing. We can see the cycle time for this command is nearly 13 minutes and roughly 6200 elements or moves in the CNC code. That's to be expected with a smaller tool using waveform machining. The tool load will be constant. We want to be able to machine at a high feed rate as a result, but there are a lot of moves used to cause the tool path to happen as intended. Another way to see the same information is to use the Verify Entity command located in the Quick Access Toolbar. And we can, again, go tab to get to the item that we're interested in seeing and report on that item. The information is written to the feedback window. Note that you can get to the same Verify Entity command from the Verify list. And if you use the command from the list, you have precision that you can override the system precision. We advise that unless you have a specific measurement in mind, just leave precision blank, and that way the Verify Entity report will be to the system precision. A third way to look at information is the timeline window. So if I go to the Windows list and turn on the timeline, EdgeCam adds a graphical chart onto the screen that shows both the total cycle time and the different events that take that up. Now by default, if the list is too wide for the display area that you're using for timeline, you could either resize the timeline window or just double click your mouse button in the white unused area of the screen and it will resize the timeline to the, the timeline display to the size that you have selected. Notice that this shows us the total cycle time, about 24 and a half minutes, but we can also see the items that contribute to the, the most to the cycle time. For example, we don't want to spend our time editing something such as drilling that may not have a big impact on cycle time when there's other drivers such as this roughing cycle that are the bigger contributors. Now, I'm going to also demonstrate that the cycle or the, the timeline window can be docked on the edge, bottom of the screen, for example, and unpinned so that it stays part of the interface and pops up as needed. Now notice that with the timeline, if I hover over this event, I can see that event in the screen. EdgeCam tells me that it's a roughing cycle, it's event number seven. If I right click over this event, I get the same action menu that we do from the sequence window and I can directly edit this cycle. Notice that the feeds and speeds are probably better suited to traditional roughing than to waveform. So let's multiply those by a factor of two and a half. That will definitely reduce the cycle time. When we look at the timeline now, Notice that the program time has shrunk to just under 17 minutes, and this cycle time is much shorter. If I want to see exactly how much shorter, I can use Verify Entity, and I can go select that roughing event. And see that it's 5 minutes 13 seconds compared to the previous 
12 minutes 49 seconds. So we made definite improvements to cycle time using all three of the tools that we have available within EdgeCam. At the end of the programming task, we're ready to generate code. And notice here that I have a job name selected, and my point here is simply to demonstrate that the information from EdgeCam is captured automatically in the setup report, or in the toolkit, so that it can be used in a setup report. So after everything's done, I'm going to open up a web browser, and we'll look at the job reports. And I'll start by refreshing the job reports. Notice that this picks up that this is the newest job report that we created. In the job report, EdgeCam picks up the current cycle time now. And if I go over and look at the job instructions list, we can see that the software picks up the cycle time for each event in that list. We expect the cycle time to be reasonably accurate since it is based on information in the post processor that's unique to the machine, such as the machine's rapid, feeds, and other information.